Hey everyone, Bird here with a, another Manchester City Moments in Time and this uh, concerns a certain Mr Keith Curl. So please, if you're new to the Citizen channel, please push that subscribe button and push that bell notification so you know on these little history vlogs and please I do City Present as well, which is all about City now. Uh, they're all coming out, so make sure your notifications are set to public. Yeah, there's a, a few dates. I mean, the main date we're thinking of today is the 6th of August 1991 which is when Keith Curl signed for Manchester City. There's a couple of other important dates that we'll touch upon today, but uh, for our moments in time, we'll have, we'll have a look at, uh, start with Keith Curl signing for City on the 6th of August, 1991. Uh, Paul Hintz at the time, writing for the uh, Manchester Evening News, called it, Vow a City A Signs, My Path to Fame by Curl. This was by Paul Hintz. Uh, Keith Curl looked around the famous Main Road Stadium today and insisted I'd finally joined a club with ambition to match my own. The 27-year-old centre-half became Manchester City's costliest player when he completed his 2.5 million transfer from Wimbledon late yesterday. The Bristol-born defender signed a five-year contract as a clear indication he intends to spend the rest of his career here. <laughs> Good luck with that one. Joining Manchester City is a dream come true for me, says Curl. From being a youngster at Bristol City, my ambitions have always been to play in the first division, to win some of the game's major honours and to play for England. Manchester City are one of the biggest clubs in the country and I'm thrilled to bits. Curl is also determined to play his way into the senior plans of England manager Graham Taylor. Well, he did eventually, didn't we? But that didn't last long, did it? I was hoping to push my claims for a senior international cap when I selected for England B tour to Australia at the end of last season he had. Unfortunately the tour proved disastrous for me because I broke my jaw on the first day and couldn't play. Says Blues boss Peter Reid. The City fans deserve the best and in Keith Curl we have signed one of the best defenders in the country. He is lightning fast and a superb organiser of the players around him. I felt that one of our problems last season was that we conceded too many goals. Keith's pace and ability to organise is going to make all the difference at the back of this season. Uh, the Blues fans won't have to wait long to see the transfer record, transfer record breaking newcomer in action. Curl will make his city bow in the testimonial match for Stockport County defender Andy Thorpe at Edgeley Park on Friday night. Well, he didn't actually feature in that game, so he did. We had to wait uh, a little bit longer for that, didn't we? Um, obviously, in his the first program of the season at Main Road, um, a game we'll get to in a moment. Well, we'll briefly mention, because it's not really what one of our moments in time, but it may be another moment in time one day. Uh, uh, speaking in the programme notes, uh, this was Peter Reid. Uh, what what of our own major signing, Keith Curl? He has cost us a British record fee for a defender of two and a half million. It may be a lot of money, but I still regard it as investment. I'm prepared to back my own judgment on this one. I believe Keith is the best around. A lad who has everything I want to see in a bat four player. I played him against him a couple of times when he was with Wimbledon and was very impressed. He is strong, quick and a good organiser. It was a matter of being patient because Wimbledon didn't want to part with the lad and turned down our first offer. Also, I had to let a couple of good lads go, Mark Ward, Alan Harper, to partially finance the curl deal. But that's football and all I was concerned about was doing what was best for Manchester City. I would like to wish Mark and Alan obviously all the best. So there you go. That was his, his words from Peter Reid in the first uh, home programme of the season. We'll get back to that in a, in a moment as well. Um, yeah, he didn't, so I say, he didn't feature in that county game. Um, there's a great image there I'm up on screen now of him with his, with his uh, kids in the, in the main stand at uh, Main Road. That's a fantastic image that, uh, that we've got there. Um, on Tuesday the 13th of August, so not long, a week later, wasn't it? Within the week, he was appointed captain. He was appointed captain for the season. So, yeah, I mean, what was uh, what was his career like leading up to joining City? So, again, we're looking back on his on his thoughts in the first programme of the season, uh, Keith Curl. Uh, it's actually, he's commenting on it here. Uh, yes, I was surprised. This is Keith Curl's own words uh, in the Manchester City pro the first home Manchester City programme. Yes, I was surprised by the fee City pay, but it doesn't worry me. It isn't a case of supply and demand. Football is about opinions, and someone's opinion, you are worth that to their team. It's an honour to have been appointed captain so quickly. There's a certain amount of responsibility that goes along with being an expensive player. I think it's only fair he should be able to shoulder some of that responsibility. Keith, and this is a bit more of his history, Keith did the rounds of the West Country clubs after joining Bristol Rollers as an apprentice. They sold him for £5,000 to Torquay. 
He was there for three months, then he was sold for £10,000 to Bristol City. After four years at Ashton Gate, he went to Reading for 150000 Eight months later, he moved to Wimbledon for 500000 effectively filling the gap created earlier in 1988 by the transfer of Brian Gale, yes, to Main Road. So that was, that was interesting. So there's been a gradual increase in prices. Goodness knows what I'll be worth if there's another move, he joked. So, yeah, I mean, that's a little bit of his... Uh, Humour and just a little bit about him, really. But, you know, and um, yeah, I've got good memories of Keith Curl, uh, to be honest with you. But my, uh, we won't touch on it today, but my lad's first uh, Old Trafford derby was uh, was the game where he scored from a penalty spot, equalised for City. So that's that's a great memory to have of Keith Curl. So, yeah, so what about his league debut? Obviously, you say he did, he did manage a friendly or two, I think, before he did his league debut. And it was on the 17th of August, 1991. 5,000 City fans in an 18,000 crowd at Highfield Road as City went to play Coventry City. City playing that wonderful, this is the home, the home kit obviously, but City playing that wonderful maroon kit. I love that kit. I don't, my, I've, got a, my, I've got a little one, my lad, my lad shirt somewhere in the back. I've got the uh, red and black stripe one there as well, but... Uh, yeah, I, I don't have a big, big version of that. It's got lost in the in the ether somewhere, unfortunately. So yeah, Highfield Road, Coventry City, a crowd of eighteen thousand, five thousand manic City fans, as you'd expect. And of course, yeah, I mean, a good, a good win for City. It wasn't extent. It wasn't a massive one. It was just a nice one nil win. But the season before, we struggled away from home. I think it was months before we actually won an away game. So it was nice to actually win our our first game. Uh, away from home yeah and obviously uh, you look at the reports and the in the scrapbooks etc that I've put together uh paul paul hints rated his performance as an eight out of ten so we look at all the things but uh yeah as you can see uh niall quinn scored the winning goal but as paul hints wrote his uh his debut keith kill's debut was bettered by another city player we're not we're not obviously having to talk about him but it was quite interesting wasn't it who who actually cost cost nothing and obviously other journalists agree uh, echoed paul hintz's uh remarks and if you read from the actual paul hintz article in the evening news all eyes at highfield row were focused understandably enough on keith curl at 2.5 million the costliest defender defender in english soccer not one of the 5,000 shirt sleeve fans who have travelled from Main Road will have been disappointed. Manchester City's record signing from Wimbledon is precisely what his manager Peter Reid promised he would be. Strong, quick and bossy. But the player who did more than most to ensure the Main Road Blues opened the season with a thoroughly deserved victory was a 19-year-old rookie who didn't cost the club a penny. Yeah, and he goes on to say Martin Margus. And then later in the thing, he obviously goes back on to Keith Kill. As for Captain Curl, Sergeant Major Curl will be a more fitting description for the new skipper. Curl bullied and cajoled the defenders around him into a super fighting, uh, super fighting unit with the lion hearted Steve Redmond and fullbacks Andy Hill and Neil Point and all responding to the newcomer's prompting. So, yeah, so good words on, on Keith Curl. So, he got a great start, wasn't it? Eight out of ten. Uh, Dennis Shaw, obviously, another guy who writes. Who writes for the? Who wrote for the Times at the, at the, uh, at the time? Um, also did there also mentioned Margus and Margus and superb form at Highfield Road helped his side off to a winning start, and etc. And then he does go on to say. Um, the young keeper did very well for us, and so sorry. The uh, to quote Peter Reed, the young keeper did very well for us, and so did Kill, said the player boss Peter Reed, and that meant we defended very well when we had to. We added so yeah, he was another one in agreement. The Margison was the man of the match, and uh, but obviously an impressive performance and uh, debut from Keith Curl. So yeah, if you look at Peter Reed's actual comments on the match itself uh used to be reed's verdict if you like in the manchester evening news keith Gill organized the players around him just as i knew he would and i believe that brought out the best of steve Redmond and Ellen Poynton. it was a sort of collective display from our back four which i have been looking for so peter reed's happy everyone's happy are we all happy yeah we're all happy i mean kill was actually booked within the first uh, the opening minutes of that game so that was quite but i think there's four bookings in um in the, the first eight minutes is it um i'm not sure i can't remember the um referee's name now but uh yeah he sort of uh clamped down very quickly on on a lot of uh shenanigans that were going on with that uh so we had to wait a little bit didn't we, we had to wait just a little bit uh for his main road debut 
which will be on the Wednesday, the 21st of August. We already mentioned the programme for it, obviously, previously. And it's, it's against, it was, I didn't mention who we were playing. It's against a, a little team called Liverpool, who I think had finished runners up the season before to Arsenal in the league. So it was no mean task, was it? And uh, yeah, I mean, key, Captain Keith Keel led us to a, a 2 1 win with yet another 8 out of 10 performance against Liverpool. I mean, and after two games, he put City joint top of Division 1 with a, with a certain other team called Manchester United. And by the, by the end of play, on the 24th of August, by the end of our third game, uh, I won't tell you who we played, it might be another moment in time, that City would be top. There you go, a top, a top of the league, thanks to an inspired, obviously, performances and obviously helped and cajoled by Keith Kill. So Keith Kill's career at City had got off to the perfect start. Anyway, thanks for joining me for this little moment in time. Just a little piece on Keith Curl. Uh, hope you enjoyed that. Um, and uh, obviously there's, there's lots more as well. Obviously there's some older ones. I mean, obviously there's, I'm trying to imp imp improve the pr the production things on these with little images, etc. I hope you appreciate it and like that. Please, any thumbs up would be absolutely fantastic. Please check all my links out. they will be on screen now for uh, Twitter and uh, my little website and if you're on facebook if you don't if you don't really go on twitter you're more on facebook you can just uh, type onto facebook search for uh, bernard Denine, and i shall come up there so if you follow me on there i'll follow you back and please if you can check out my little website moviegamenostalgia.com for old rare uh, dvds movie posters and board games that'll be fantastic little thumbs up to you please that'll be absolutely great anyway i hope you enjoyed that little moments in time that started from the 6th of august 1991 and progressed to the 24th of august city top of the league what what more could we ever ask for it has happened a lot recently hasn't it but at that time hey we took that we took that with great spirit in those in the 90s obviously the early 90s and uh, what were we to know what was to carry on about that from there but obviously there'll be more moments in time talking about things like that anyway thanks for that Whatever you're going to do with your day, have a great one. Look after yourselves, look after your friends, look after your family. More importantly, look after each other. And until we meet again, this is Bernadine saying goodbye for now. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.